quite some time since I have done a watch me work on my channel. I mean, you know, two years of being locked inside and not essentially not working would be the main reason why I haven't done any watch me works. But also I just hadn't. <laughs> but recently I have been like binge watching Nails by Katie Dutra's Watch Me Works. And I don't know, it's probably her voice that is just so enjoyable to listen to. And just like watching her work, it's just so enjoyable. So I'm, I'm doing Watch Me Works again because of her. <laughs> I'm almost certain they won't be as enjoyable as hers, but we're gonna give it a go. So for today's Watch Me Work, I am going to be doing some little teeny tiny natural nails with Luminary Nail Systems, cause you know I love that shit. So this client that I'm gonna be working on used to have much, much longer enhancements on her nails and we have recently chopped them off because she has started rock climbing. Love that for her, hate that for me. <laughs> actually, I thoroughly enjoy doing her little tiny nails. I'm actually really into doing natural nails these days, just like, just loving it. Little tiny nails, little tiny artwork. I'm just feeling the short naturals. So for this design, like I said, we used Luminary Nail Systems. We used Inspire and Dream. Purple and blue, I think those are the ones. Too lazy to get up and check. And she actually came up with this design. She came in, told me what she wanted. One hand, one color, one hand, the other color. And then she wanted the little smiley faces and yin yangs in darker versions of those colors. So. That's what we did. She gave me free reign in the colors we chose. And because I wanted to use Luminary, we chose those colors. <laughs> they're also excellent for springtime because they're pastels. They look like little Easter eggies. Okay, I've rambled enough about nonsense. So why don't we just jump in to the uh, watch me work. Excellent. So the first thing we're gonna do, obviously, is remove her previous set. This set was also done with Luminary and then we painted this plaid pattern on top so cute kind of gave me granny square vibes but it's been a couple weeks so it's time to remove it so I am using a medium sanding band just to remove the design I'm not using this to debulk or anything just to remove the design so when you are removing the design it's important to remember to keep your e-file at a high speed if you go too slow you're going to end up putting too much pressure on the nail it's going to end up getting hot and you could potentially end up with like gouges in the nail so just pop it up some speed and use a very little pressure and the design will come off very easily Once the design is removed, I am switching my bit to this sort of cone-shaped carbide bit. This bit is from Koopa. It's the same brand as my e-file. And I am using this bit to take some of the bulk off of her nail. So because we're shortening these nails quite a bit from what they were, we don't need as much of a structure on the nail. And we're also going to be building that structure with the color luminary. So I wanted to remove about 80% of the clarity that was already on her nails. And same thing goes for this bit. You want to keep it at a nice high speed and a very gentle touch to remove the remaining product. And it will come off nice and easy doing that. So now I've switched over to this little cuticle bit. It's like the little sort of football shaped one. And I have this in reverse and I am using it to push back the cuticles that are basically growing up her nail. Now you'll notice that I keep it in the same direction. I'm not flip-flopping between forward and reverse depending on which side of the nail I'm on. I actually just change the position of my hand. I find this a whole lot easier for me and a whole lot quicker for my client. Once all of the cuticle has been removed off of her nail and pushed up to where it needs to be, I'm going to nip it. But I am only going to nip the, the bits that are waving at me. They are going to be white, which means they're dead, 
and they're going to be in my way. I am not cutting anything living or that doesn't need to be cut. Then I am shortening and reshaping the free edge. She goes rock climbing now. That's why we're shortening her nails. She used to have nice long enhancements and then we shortened them to what you just saw and now we're shortening them just to her fingertip edge so she can continue rock climbing easily <laughs> and then we will also buff over top of the nail with a very gentle hand you don't need to be rough with this we're just trying to slightly abrase the nail so that the product sticks and we are then also sort of blending whatever residual product is on her nail into the natural nail so that there's no weird steps or anything dust and all that off the nail. I did completely cleanse and dehydrate the nail before going in with this primer. This is Commit from Luminary, obviously. On this client, I like to go in with two coats. I find it helps with the adhesion, especially when she's rock climbing. And I really like to use a scrubby motion when I'm applying it to the nail just to really get it into all the nooks and crannies of the nail. So we're starting off with Dream. It's the blue luminary shade. And I go in with a nice thin coat, again, a little bit scrubby just to really get it into the nooks and crannies. And I'm going to cure this layer. So once I cover all five nails, I'm going to cure it before we do anything else. And I'm using an orange wood stick just to get rid of any gel that might have gotten on the skin or into the cuticle area, because we do not want to cure that. So once I have put the base layer on all five nails, I'm just taking my detailing brush and going around the cuticle area and just sort of tightening that up and getting it nice and crispy clean. Once I have finished with this hand, we're going to pop those nails in the lamp and then we're moving on to her other hand. I am priming the exact same way and then going in with the Inspire color, the purple color, and doing the exact same thing as a base coat nice and scrubby layer and then going in with my detailing brush to clean up the edges and the orange wood stick to get anything off of the skin. So now we get to the builder or structure phase. So I'm going to switch back and forth between the hands. So I'm going to do the pinky finger on this hand, put down my slip layer, and then go back in, get a bigger bead of gel and work it back and forth on the nail, starting at the cuticle and bringing it down to the free edge. Then I'm gonna take the same detailer brush and just clean up around the edges. This is the easiest way to get the gel right to the end of the sidewalls and around the cuticle area. This is also an excellent way to sort of move the gel around the nail to get the shape and structure that you want.
And once I'm happy with how it looks, I'm gonna get her to flip her hand upside down so that gravity can do the work and pull the gel into the center of the nail. And I'm just gonna tease it along with my detailer brush. And once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna get her to pop it into the lamp. And then we're going to move on to the index finger on her other hand, doing the exact same technique, putting down my slip layer, getting a bigger bead, putting that down, using the detailer brush, flipping upside down, it's gonna be a repeat on every nail. <laughs> and I'm just gonna flip flop, like I said, between the hands. That way we're getting a full cure on each nail. If you would rather work on one full hand at a time, then I would just recommend flash curing each nail so that the structure and the shape and everything holds the way you want it to. And so it's not like pooling into the cuticles or sidewalls or anything. And then once you're done the entire hand flash curing in between each nail, you can just go ahead and cure the whole nail while you start on the first nail of the other hand. So let's go ahead and fast forward through the rest of this process because it is the exact same on every nail. So once both hands are cured, I'm going to clean off the sticky layer and finish file them just with my hand file. I'm just doing this to refine the shape of the free edge, to get rid of any lumps and bumps that might be on the nail and to clean up around the cuticle, just make it nice and seamless to the cuticle area. However, finish filing isn't necessarily required when doing this. If your application is really excellent and there aren't many lumps and bumps, then you don't necessarily have to finish file. It's entirely up to you. It's just sort of part of my process and I kind of just do it all the time. Once I am done filing, I'm going to clean up all the dust with some rubbing alcohol. You can use cleanup solution. You could even use acetone if you wanted to. And then I am going to top coat the two nails that I'm going to be doing art on with a matte top coat. I'm using the Empower Luminary Matte Top Coat here. And obviously you're gonna wanna cure your gel top coat before you do any art. All right, time to get into the artwork. So I am using matching colors on each hand. So on the light blue hand, I'm using a dark blue gel paint. And I'm just starting off by using a dotting tool to just sort of like move it around in the circle. This is for a happy face. So I'm just using, like I said, the dotting tool to maneuver the gel around the nail into just like a messy circle. I just find that the easiest way to get product sort of in the area that I want it and then I'm going to perfect it and clean it up and make it the actual circle with my detailing brush. So I have product on my detailing brush but I'm also working with the product that I've already put on the brush and I'm just I'm literally just pushing it around the nail with my brush. Now the reason that I put product on my brush to begin with is almost like a slip layer on my brush. It just helps the gel move around easier.
So I am not the greatest at making circles on nails. I definitely could have just stamped this instead of hand painting it, but just taking my time and with patience, it turned out not too bad. So once I am pretty happy with the shape of the circle, I'm taking a small sort of gel brush. I'm using this more to clean up around the circle. I'm dipping it in a teeny tiny little bit of cleanup solution and I'm just moving it around the circle just to sort of get any weird little brush strokes or marks or dots. So now I'm just adding the mouth on the little happy face. I did not record the blue hand unfortunately and the purple hand my head as you can see was in most of it but for the eyeballs I just did a little boop boop of my brush just sort of at an angle so that they were a little elongated like a little oval and then for the smile I just sort of went from the middle to the left from the middle to the right and then a little boop boop on each corner for the little mouth fold bits. So back to the blue hand, I am now doing a little yin yang on her middle finger. So I'm going back into the dark blue color and I'm going to just sort of sketch out a little circle, like the outline of a circle and then do the little S in the middle of it to create the yin yang symbol. Again, take your time and use patience. This isn't necessarily going to be a super fast process. Circles, circles are not easy. So in order to get my lines this thin, I am using minimal paint on my brush and I'm also using minimal pressure on the nail. I am pretty much using the point of my brush to get the very, very fine lines, not so much the belly of my brush. So I started trying to fill in the one side of the yin yang with my detailer brush and realized that that would take so much time. So I just grabbed this little teeny gel brush from Glitter Bells and carefully filled in the one side, just sort of like in the center area and using the curve of the brush to work with the curve of the circle and the S formation in the middle. And then I take my detailer brush and fill in the rest of it, just like I did with the circle for the happy face. And then I clean up outside of the circle with a small gel brush again, just like I did with the happy face. And then I am doing the exact same thing on the purple side. So once the blue side is cured, I'm going in with a light blue color that matches the luminary color. In this case, it is a color from Fusion. I will have it listed below. And I'm just filling in the opposite side just to make sure that all of the lines are nice and crispy and that there is no dark blue on the light blue side. So just like on the dark blue side, I'm using my gel brush to fill in the center and then cleaning up the edges with my detailer brush and making it all nice and perfect. And then once I am happy with how the light side looks, I'm taking my dotting tool and putting a little light dot on the dark side. And then I am curing the entire nail. And again, repeating the exact same process on the purple side.
Once cured, I'm using my detailer brush one more time and the dark blue paint to just clean up and perfect the yin yang symbol in general, just perfecting the circle and the S formation at the top and the bottom, just so it flows a little bit better. And then I will repeat the process on the purple nail as well. And then lastly, I will take the blue paint and my dotting tool and make a dark blue dot on the light blue side. You guessed it, more head in the way. Okay, so all of the art is cured, so now it's time for top coat. So she decided she wanted a matte top coat, which I completely agree with. That is going to make the artwork stand out really fantastically. Also, Luminary looks fantastic when it's mattified, but because she is going rock climbing and going to be very hard on her nails, we decided we were going to do a rubber top coat first to just really seal in that design and then once that's cured go in with our matte top coat to give it the matte effect so we've double top coated the nails including the ones with the art to really make sure that they're sealed in and protected So the rubber or the glossy top coat that I'm using to seal in everything at the beginning is the Glitter Bells Rubber Gel Top Coat. And then the matte top coat that I'm using to get the matte effect for the second top coat is the Luminary Empower Matte Top Coat. And this is the finished product. Fantastic. So those are the little itty bitty teeny natural nails that we did with Luminary Nail Systems and some super cute nail art. I hope you enjoyed this video. Possibly learn something. If you do like these Watch Me Work style videos, let me know and I will gladly make tons more for you. These are pretty easy to pump out. If you don't like them, let me know and I will limit them for you because I'd rather spend my time making things you want to see. I'm not going to waste my time doing these if you don't like them. So let me know. Also, while you're down there in the comment section, let me know if there's any, you know, artwork that you want to see or just like whatever. Just let me know. Dietary issues. We can chat about that if you want. I mean, I'm not an expert, but we can chat about it. So that's going to be it for me. If you want to continue watching some Watch Me Works, I will leave a little playlist up here in the description box. You know, it'll be around. You can find it. You can continue watching those. If you do not have time to continue watching me and nails, then I will see you in my next video, hopefully. Bye!